We have got some massive Windows news to share this morning. This news is uh, slightly old, but it's kind of been coming together, and now it's at a point where I think uh, I can bring it to you and kind of give you a good synopsis of what is going on. So on June the 2nd, we got this tweet from the official Windows Twitter handle. Join us June 24th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time for the Microsoft event to see what's next. So the first thing you're going to notice when you look at this uh, this tweet here is there's a video, right? And in this video, you got the Windows logo with light shining through said window. When you look at the light, how it's shining down there on the floor, what you don't see is the crossbar here, right? You just see the shadow from the center bar, no crossbar. So, of course, I tweeted something about how this was confirming Surface Neo because you've got a dual screen looking thing sitting there. And look, who knows? Maybe that's still possible. I, I highly doubt it, but it would make me very happy if that little joke actually came to be true. Another way to look at this, of course, when you pair it with the fact that the event is happening at 11 a.m. is that this is a teaser for Windows 11. Of course, we are on Windows 10. We've been on Windows 10 now for several years. Um, we went from 8 to 10. I guess RT was in there too. But now we're on Windows 10. Windows 11 is, of course, what should be coming next if you ignore the fact that they like to skip numbers uh, a lot of the time. But anyways, Windows 11 is what is coming next. So then that brings us to a really big question, and that is what will Windows 11 be like? How big of a change is this and when should we expect it to actually be here in our hands to be used? And there's an article here on XDA developers by Rich Woods who actually tweeted this article uh, when it came out as well. And it does a pretty good job of kind of giving a synopsis of what is going on here. And what Rich says in this article is pretty interesting. So he goes over what we should be expecting from Windows 11. And the biggest thing to be expecting here is kind of relevant to what we were seeing in Windows 10X, which is now officially dead. If you don't know, Windows 10X was going to be Microsoft's answer to Chromebooks. This was going to be a lightweight distribution of Windows with a refreshed user experience, a, a refreshed uh, graphical user interface, so to speak, a new taskbar, a new start menu. See how the taskbar is centered, the start menu is centered. This is all Chrome OS looking. You've got a new action center here also very chrome os looking and this was meant to again compete with chromebooks this was not going to have win32 app support it was going to be windows at windows store apps only but it looked visually very nice and it was very good with uh, touch screen devices as it was the os that surface neo was actually going to run well windows 10x is now dead and what microsoft has said is that a lot of the stuff from windows 10x is now going to be coming over to windows proper which is going to be windows 11. so the first thing you can expect out of windows 11 is a massively refreshed user experience so a lot of these design cues from windows 10x may be making their way over we've talked about you know rounded corners more brighter colors and things like that and rich talks about this here we've seen some of this in some of the early preview builds of windows 10 now but apparently they've been stripping out most of the big changes out of these insider builds and that is going to be what is going to be coming with Windows 11. It says Windows has been focused on sharp corners since Windows 8 and those squared off tiles made their way into Windows 10. Windows 11 will follow suit with more modern operating systems like iOS and Android now. Rich says here there are also new more colorful icons throughout the operating system. You'll find these in File Explorer Device Manager and pretty much everywhere else. And he echoes what I just said as well. The way you interact with the UI will be different as well. A big focus is making Windows better for touch. Obviously if you're a Surface Pro user that's going to come as a great uh, uh, pleasantry to you because Windows 10 just isn't all that great with touch. It works okay, but it's nothing incredible on that front. Windows 8, as Rich said here, let me just read his words because he says it well, Windows 8 was all in on touch. Windows 10 felt like it scaled back a bit too much. I would agree with that completely. Windows 11 will support more swipe gestures and such, but more importantly, it should be more consistent with what happens when you tap something. I've also seen and heard some rumors that some of the weirdness with Windows 10, like the fact that you have you know, control panel, but also the other settings, like control 
control panel looks nothing like your other settings. Like there, as you see, th th this looks like old Windows. This looks like new Windows, obviously. And that, that is a little bit weird. We do kind of have this strange little bit of, of, of old and little bit of new going on here in Windows 10. And I've heard some rumors that some of that stuff might get addressed with Windows 11. And that would be really, really nice to see. But maybe a, a even bigger part than just the the visual changes, which you know obviously I'm I'm going to love the visual changes for all the reasons I've mentioned. But maybe the biggest thing happening with Windows 11 is going to be massive changes to the App Store, to the Microsoft Store. And I've talked about this in a prior video, but let's go back to Rich's words here. Satya Nadella said that the new OS will unlock greater economic opportunity for developers and creators. A new Microsoft Store. This is a big part of the update. This is a huge, massive part of the update. So in short, in the past, Microsoft had developed what they hoped were ways to bring outside apps from Android and iOS to the Microsoft Store. These things just weren't really used very well at all. They tried to make it easy, right? So I've got an iOS app. I'm going to make it really easy to, to, to take my iOS app and make it into a Microsoft Store app and bring it over. Well, People just didn't do it. It was still too much work for not enough of a return. So Microsoft is tearing down all these barriers at this point. Developers will be able to submit their apps without packaging them and host them on their own CDN, Content Delivery Network, meaning they won't actually be distributed by Microsoft just through the storefront. You're going to have to do no additional work. Just submit your app. It pops up in the store and people can download it. So like, let's say you've got a program. Let's say like Google Chrome, because he mentions this here. Uh, below, Google Chrome obviously runs on Windows. Well, in the past, Google would have had to have repackaged Google Chrome to be in the Windows Store, the UWP format, whatever you want to call it, then submit it to the store, then Microsoft distributes it through their own CDN. People just don't want to do that. So now Google can just say, hey, here's Chrome. Done. And it appears in the store, and presumably when you go to install it, it's actually going to still download it from Google and install it on your on your Windows 11 device. So essentially, the Microsoft Store will cease being a customized storefront in the way that the Play Store and the iOS uh, App Store are, and will just basically turn into sort of a consignment store where people can just bring their own apps in and distribute them themselves. They're just using the storefront as a way to get eyeballs onto their program, which I think is really, really good. And I think that that actually harkens to the, the general spirit of Windows, which is this openness to development and to new things and these sorts of ideas. So I think this is actually really, really smart. He also does mention X64 emulation on Windows on ARM. That would be a really big deal for Surface Pro X users and people that love seeing ARM development continue. Obviously, we've talked ad nauseum about uh, Apple's M1 chip and Microsoft needing to really um, bring the fight to them. And this is going to help on the software side to do just that. It's been in testing for insiders for a little bit now, and it seems like it's doing okay. So this will come out to the bulk of us uh, here shortly as well. So when is this going to actually happen? Apparently pretty damn soon, as soon as this fall. From what we're seeing here and from Rich here, Windows 11 is pretty much ready to rock and roll. They're just waiting to actually have the right time to roll it out. So this should be happening again this fall. We're going to see some insider builds and some beta builds before that, before it is rolled out. Should be a free update for everybody running Windows 10. And personally, I am pretty damn excited. Let me know what you guys think about Windows 11 in the comments down below. Thank you for making it to the end of this video as that helps me tremendously. If you want to help support the channel in a more direct way, please check out the links in the description to both Flatter and to my website, scariafloateral.com, because those are the two ways to monetarily support the channel. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.